Hi, welcome along to another video. Um, as you can see, we've got a lovely book to talk about today. This review, this report, 780 pages long. And we'll just do uh, a small amount from the introduction and a few bits from the comments. Uh, the comments. <laughs> and a few bits from the contents. Very interesting stuff in the contents. And um, yeah, you'll find some very interesting, well, usual sort of stuff coming up. But it's also interesting. Before we get into the video, I'd like to thank my subscribers. Thank you for being there, especially those that have been there for a while. Those of you that didn't get deleted when YouTube purged my account of subs subscribers a couple of years ago. Yeah, thanks for being there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing uh, and paying an interest. Well done for keeping your head together and just stick with it. Keep educating people. I hope you find this useful in uh, educating people in what's going on. This is going up to uh, 1978, so 40 years ago. Hopefully give some alternative answers to the climate crisis, the extreme weather events that we're seeing. The fact that no one, no celebrity, no politician, no one is talking about 90 years worth of weather modification and the so-called climate crisis in the same sentence is just laughable. You know it, I know it. And um, now we're talking in terms of global heating. Let's keep it in mind that global heating and ionospheric heating by ionospheric heaters such as HARP are probably connected as well. So all these fancy terms of climate crisis, global heating, when you actually think about what they're saying, it's easy enough to connect it to man-made technology, climate modification, as in geoengineering, climate crisis. So there's a climate crisis because of climate modification, such as geoengineering, solar radiation management. Easy enough to work out, isn't it? Weather modification programs, problems, policy and potential. This was prepared at the request of the honorary Howard W. Cannon, chairman of the Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation in the United States Senate. First published in 1978, the Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation had various representatives from various states. So the chairman was from Nevada, then we've got members from Washington, Louisiana, South Carolina, Hawaii, Illinois, Kentucky, New Hampshire, Nebraska, Michigan, Kansas, Michigan, Alaska, Arizona, Oregon, <laughs> New Mexico, Missouri, so the letter of transmittal, an introduction to the book, says this. So November the 15th, 1978, US Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation. So this is where, once again, for official sources, factual sources, real news, you get it confirmed that the weather was being modified before 1978. And the conclusion is today in 2020, what effect has that global weather modification had? To the members of the Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation, the US Senate, I am pleased to transmit herewith for your information and use the following report on weather modification, programs, problems, policy and potential. The report was prepared at my request by the Congressional Research Service under the direction of Dr Robert Morrison specialist in Earth Sciences Science Policy Research Division. We thank Dr Morrison and the others involved in the study for their extremely thorough and scholarly report. Substantial material on almost all areas of weather modification are included and the report will provide the committee with an excellent reference source for future deliberations on the subject. The completion of the report is particularly timely due to the upcoming recommendations expected from the Weather Modification Advisory Board and the Department of Commerce as directed by Public Law 94-490 on the future federal role in weather modification. James B. Pearson, Ranking Minority Member. From the letter requesting study, just a couple of sentences I'm going to read you now. While weather modification projects have been operational for nearly 25 years and have been shown to have significant potential for preventing, diverting, moderating 
or ameliorating the adverse effects of such weather-related disasters and hazards, I am greatly concerned regarding the lack of a coordinated federal weather modification policy and a coordinated and comprehensive program for weather modification research and development. So back to the beginning of that. It's operational for nearly 25 years. This was uh, from July the 30th, 1976. So that's back to 1951. 25 years off of 1976 leaves you with 1951. So that says a lot. 1951 up to 2020, 69 years. Okay, so if you're 69 years old, when the 1951 weather modification was happening, you maybe saw the start of something. But let's say if you're 59, 49, 39, 29, or 19 years old, then obviously you're a lot further down the road from when this stuff started. Worth considering. So we'll skip through the letter of submittal and go into the contents. So in chapter one, there's an introduction and summary of issues, perspective, situation, advantages, timelines, summary of issues in planned weather modification, the role of federal government, roles of state and local governments, legal issues, private rights in the clouds. It's very, <laughs> that sounds very interesting, private rights in the clouds. Liability for weather modification, interstate legal issues, international legal issues, economic issues, issues complicating economic analysis of weather modification, weather modification and conflicting interests, social issues, social factors, need for public education on weather modification, decision making, international is issues, ecological issues. Chapter 2, History of Weather Modification. History of weather modification prior to 1946. So, what we've just said in the introduction, back to 1951. So, history of weather modification prior to 1946. Pre-scientific period, early scientific period, development of scientific fundamentals, early cloud seeding experiments. Okay, that's up to 1946 after 1946, weather modification since 1946, research projects since 1947. Get your pen and paper, you ready? Research projects since 1947. Project Cirrus, the Weather Bureau Cloud Physics Project, the US experiments of 1953 and 1954, Arizona Mountain Cumulus Experiments, Project White Top, W H I T E T O P, White Top, Climax Experiments, Lightning Suppression Experiments, Fog Dispersal Research, Hurricane Modification, Hail Suppression, Foreign Weather Modification Research, Commercial Operations. Chapter 3 technology of planned weather modification, assessment of the status of weather modification technology, classification of weather modification technologies, principles and status of weather modification technologies, precipitation augmentation, cumulus clouds, cumulus modification experiments, effectiveness of precipitation enhancement research and operations. Results achieved through cumulus modification, recent advances in cu cumulus cloud modification, orographic clouds and precipitation, orographic precipitation modification, or <laughs> orographic seeding experiments and seedability criteria, operational orographic seeding projects, results achieved through orographic precipitation modification, hail suppression, the hail problem, modification of hail, hail seeding technologies, evaluation of hail suppression technology, surveys of hail suppression effectiveness, conclusions from the TASH study, as capital T A S H, TASH study, dissipation of fog and stratus clouds, cold fog modification, warm fog modification, lightning suppression. Lightning Modification, Evaluation of Lightning Suppression Technology, 
modification of severe storms, hurricanes, generation and characteristics of hurricanes, modification of hurricanes, tornadoes, modification of tornadoes. Technical problem areas in planned weather modification. Seeding technology, evaluation of weather modification projects, extended area effects of weather modification, approaches to weather modification other than seeding. It's not bad. First three chapters, 143 pages. Chapter 4. Inadvertent weather and climate modification. Introduction, terminology, climate. Climatic fluctuation and climate change. Weather, weather modification. Climate modification, planned climate modification, inadvertent climate modification. Background historical perspective. The facts about inadvertent weather and climate modification. <laughs> Chapter 5. Federal activities in weather modification. Legis legislative and congressional activities. So near the end of Chapter 5 under the federal programs in weather modification mentions uh, who's involved so the Department of Interior, Project Sky Water the Colorado River Basin Pilot Project CRBPP in capitals the High Plains Cooperative Program HIPLEX in capitals the Sierra Cooperative Pilot Project SCPP in capitals Drought Mitigation Assistance, the National Science Foundation, Inadvertent Weather Modification, Social Utilization Activities, Agricultural Weather Modification, Department of Commerce, Global Monitoring for Climatic Change, Lightning Suppression, Modification of Extratropical Severe Storms, Department of Defense, Air Force Fog Dispersal Operations Army Research and Development Navy Research and Development Air Force Research and Development Overseas Operations I think they mean the CIA Overseas Operations Department of Transportation Department of Energy So Chapter 6 Review of Recommendations for a National Program in Weather Modification Chapter 7, State and Local Activities in Weather Modification, such as California, Illinois, Kansas, North Dakota, South Dakota, Utah, Washington. Chapter 8, Private Activities in Weather Modification, Commercial Weather Modifiers, Weather Modification Organizations, such as Weather Modification Association, American Meteorology Society, Opposition to Weather Modification, General Discussion, Opposition to the seeding project above Hungry Horse Dam. That's Hungry, H-U-N-G-R-Y, Horse Dam. Tri-State National Weather Association, Citizens for the Preservation of Natural Resources. Chapter 9, Foreign Activities in Weather Modification. What was known as the USSR, SR, Israel, Australia, Canada, Mexico, China, Kenya. South Africa, Rhodesia, which is now known as Zimbabwe, as you know, India, and lastly, the Swiss Hail Experiment. Chapter 10, International Aspects of Weather Modification. Chapter 10 starts at page 427 of 780, International Aspects of Weather Modification. And it goes on about the United Nations, and those sorts of people. Chapter 11, Legal Aspects of Weather Modification, Private Rights in the Clouds, Liability for Weather Modification, Defences which may be raised against claims of liability. So if someone claims you're liable for damage through your weather modification activities, there's some defences there for um, if you need to get out of it, basically. Fiscal powers, war powers, property power, treaty power, or oh, lots of power. Chapter 12, Economic Aspects of Weather Modification. Economic Aspects of Weather Modification Procedures, Fog Dispersal, Precipitation Augmentation, Orographic Cloud Seeding, Convective Cloud Seeding, Precipitation Augmentation and Energy Considerations, Hail Suppression, 
lightning suppression and reduction in storm damage. Case studies of the econo economics of weather modification. Hungry Horse Area, Montana, Connecticut River Basin, State of Illinois, Nine County Southeastern Crop Reporting District, South Dakota, Colorado River, there's another one, and then at the end there's the appendices with um, state statutes concerning weather modification. So these are states with statutes that exist concerning weather modification. Arizona, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Florida, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Iowa, Kansas, Louisiana, Minnesota, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Mexico, New York, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, South Dakota, Texas, Utah, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. Plenty for you to go and look for there. That's a bit of a rundown on this book. I don't know how many copies are out there. I've only seen one available, apart from this one. So good luck with finding it. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. There's a bit of a full-on intense ride of just word after word after word, but it surely gives you something to pass on to other people and say, look, pay attention to this. Um, you'll notice at no point through that did I stop and say, and here's a word from our sponsors. That's because we don't have any. Um, a polite request if you use Brave Browser then please if you want to tip then you know what to do and how to tip people you can do it when you're on this channel if you look up to the bar you'll see the icons highlighted and that you can tip to the channel um, we love cryptocurrency any we'll take it all you name it we'll find a wallet for it um, please get in touch by personal message if you'd like to do that obviously everything helps Thank you for watching again. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing if you share this. Uh, thank you for caring, obviously, because not enough people do, or people care enough to go, here's a picture on social networking. Not enough people are, are backing up the people that are actually taking action. Um, people need to get back out on the streets to do with this as well. Everyone else is on the streets to do with everything else though. It's about time the anti-geoengineering movement got back out on the streets. There hasn't been much happening since 2015 so everyone's had a bit of a rest. It's time to get active again in whatever way possible. Keep up the good works. See you next time.